In most cases, components are created by developers. In this tutorial, I would like to follow up on the first video of coding an XM Cloud component. As the configuration in XM Cloud is done, I can start implementing the service teaser component. We're using the Foundation Head Starter Kit for XM Cloud using Next.js and go through the steps of implementation, styling, and deployment. Therefore, we are connecting our local running app with a remote XM Cloud instance. In the last video, we configured everything needed in XM Cloud to register the services teaser component and create the data model, meaning the data source templates. This was done by the XM Cloud developer. Now it is up for the application developer to code and style the component and bring it to life. The services teaser component consists of a wrapping element that contains a collection of six services displayed as tiles. Each service shows an image or icon a heading stating the service name and a short description for each service. Each tile is linkable to the service detail page. In mobile design, all information is stacked underneath each other. To build the component, we need to take a look at the content model that was prepared for us. So each component that is added to a page will be associated with one service teaser data source. Each service teaser data source references 0 to n service detail pages. And each service detail page provides the service heading, the service description and the service image. We should not display more than 6 services. So let's get our hands dirty. We build the application using the Foundation Head Starter Kit which provides a head application written in Next.js. The solution has been set up during an earlier tutorial. I've downloaded the branch containing the feature already and now I can start the implementation. XM Cloud, meaning the Sidecore XM Cloud CLI, helps us to get a quick start using the scaffold command when creating components. So I navigate into the app folder, which is company. I type JS the scaffold passing the component name services teaser. I can also pass a path if this component should be created in a dedicated folder. I decide to have this component being created in the services folder. A new component file is created for me. Let's have a look. Beside importing React, we also import the component params and the component rendering from the JSS SDK for Next.js. The Sidecore JavaScript rendering SDK JSS, represents a set of JavaScript packages and sample applications that add first-class support for JavaScript frameworks and enable the development of modern applications that consume Sidecore data. In a nutshell, JSS helps us keeping our components inline editable in the what you see is what you get editing tools like pages and also abstracts the retrieval of data through the GraphQL endpoint. So we do not necessarily have to write the GraphQL queries ourselves. Back to the component. We have an interface with the service teaser props which is created for me already providing the rendering from XM Cloud through JSS and the parameters. The actual component markup is exported through the default variant. It currently just displays the component name, which is services teaser component. We can rename the variant to anything we like, and we can also add alternative UI variations of the same component by adding more variants with different names. Now let's spin up the local app and connect that to the remote XM Cloud instance to see how the component looks now. So in the app folder, company, I run npm run start connected. I open the browser on localhost port 3000 and here we go. The component is displayed. Back to code. As the static HTML of my component from the site design is available to me, I replace the existing markup with the one I got from the static design. Some parts are now underlined in red. I need to replace the class with the class name attribute. Therefore, in Visual Studio Code, I press Ctrl F to search for all occurrences of class and press Ctrl H to replace those with class name. As I don't want to step through the file, I press Ctrl Alt Enter to confirm the replacement of all occurrences. Done. Let's check how the component looks now. Seems it is missing styles. First, I'll style the section element to have a proper alignment. Therefore, I navigate into the SARS folder components, layout, and create the underscore section.scss file. 
I paste the CSS in that file that I copied from the static site. Next, I need to register the new file in the index.scss at import section. The component is now properly aligned and the background color has a light gray. Let's add some styling to the tiles. Therefore, I add a service folder into the component folder and I add the file underscore services.scss. I also directly add a file named index.scss where I register the new service.scss file. In the service.scss file, I add the styles I copied from the markup. I also need to register my new index.scss file in the components folder index.scss file. That should be it. Let's check the component in the browser again. It looks already as requested. Only the icons are missing as they are not imported yet. Let me clean up some tabs as we are done with the styling for now. This is all static HTML until here. So let's start pulling data from XM Cloud. I will create the service tile first. I scaffold a new component that represents my service tile. Starting from the app folder company, I'm using the JSS scaffold command again. As JSS is indexing all components from the component folder, it is good practice to keep all components that are not directly associated with a rendering item, meaning that are not directly used by marketers, into dedicated folders outside of the component folder. In the Accelerate recipes you find on the developer portal that we recommend calling the folder Atoms. So my service component will be created in Atom slash services. The component has been created using the same template that we saw before. So I copy the markup from the service teaser that should become my service tile and paste that into my service component. Seems I'm missing a closing div tag here. Now I can define the fields that I expect from the content model as an interface that I name service fields. So there is a heading field that is of type field and expects a string. Make sure those types get imported from the Sitecore JSS Next.js package. I also define the description field as field expecting a string and I define the image field as of type image field. I make the service props a type and I remove the rendering property as I don't need that. What I need instead is a fields property that is of type service fields as I want to pass those fields into my component. Now I can adjust the markup and use the content I expect from XM Cloud. So in the H4 element, I use JSS text as this helps the marketer maintaining the content inline in pages. I also have to import JSS text. And I'm adding the field attribute where I'm passing the value from my props, meaning props.fields.heading. I copy all of that to use it with the description as well. Seems I accidentally copied the div with a class name row. That needs to remain only in the service teaser component, so I'll remove it from here. Back in the service teaser component, I want to call the new service component. So I start defining an interface that I name service teaser fields. As this represents my main data model that is associated with a rendering item, I only expect the field named services, which is an array of services. Let me also define the interface for services, which is basically fields of type service fields that I defined with a service component. Again, I make the interface for my service teaser props a type and I add the fields property that is of type service teaser fields, so I pass the data coming from XM Cloud into my component. Now I want to loop through the services maintained in the multilist field in XM Cloud, meaning through the array of services. Each element will be represented by the service parameter. I also use the index parameter that I need later. I define the properties that I need to pass to the service component, meaning the service props, which contains the params property and the fields property. Last but not least, I return the service component passing the key attribute and the service props, meaning passing all parameters as a single object. 
Of course, I need to import the service component. And as the component variant was called default, I need to import default with the alias service. Now I can remove the static HTML as I don't need that anymore. Let's check the browser again. I can see that heading and description are pulled from XM Cloud. But all gray icon backgrounds have the same shape now. And that makes sense because we only have a single implementation of service tile with a statically defined SVG. So let's change that. In the root of my app, I create a data folder where I define all SVG shapes I want to use with that component. I paste in some prepared constant that contains a JSON array as a string. I could have made that an object directly, anyway. Each object of the array contains an ID field that is just numbered from 0 to 5 and an SVG field containing the code for the SVG itself. In the service component, I can now load the JSON and pass that into an object. Now I remove the static SVG code and replace that with the object data array using the SVG field. But I want a different shape each time. Therefore, I define an ID field of type number and use that as an index for the array. Last thing I have to do is adjusting the service teaser component to pass that ID. So I'm using the index value from my iteration through the services array. As I have only six shapes and expect numbers between 0 and 5, I limit the number of iterations to 6 starting with the first entry. Now I can see that the component shows different shapes. I want to see if the component works in pages. So I stage all changes, I pass the comment implementation of service teaser component including styling and commit and push the changes. Usually it is good to run an npm run build before to fix all linter errors before having the deployment to XM Cloud fail. I'll do that off screen and create the PR to merge to main. The deployment is finished. Taking a look into pages, I can see my component looking as expected and I can inline edit the fields I have defined so far. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my video. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss further content from our Discover SiteQuiz channel. Leave a comment if you have questions or any remarks. See you next time.